Using technology to track steps and fitness has become commonplace. You've likely seen friends or family sporting a Fitbit or smartwatch. But that's only the beginning of a new wave of wearable technology emerging from labs around the world. But how is wearable tech evolving and how will it impact your life? We're used to devices that we interact with at a desk or in the palm of our hands like a smartphone. We're now moving that technology to pieces of our body. So our hands or our arms or our torso or our legs. And we're attaching that technology, that connected technology that usually has sensors that allows for us to know our bodies better. It's allowing for us to be able to monitor our biometrics, like our heart rate, our breathing, our activity, and then look at that data almost like a data mirror. There are many different categories from brainwave wearables all the way down to smart socks. I'm actually wearing a smart shirt from a Montreal startup called Ohm Signal, and it's measuring my heart rate, my respiratory, and my activity. And you can see here in the iPhone, which is being connected to the sensors in the smart shirt, I can see my real-time heart rate, my breaths per minute, and my activity. The Lumo Lift is a device that helps you with your posture. And that's a number one issue for me is slouching, especially at a computer or over my smartphone. And so what Lumo Lift does, I call it the nagging mom of wearable tech because it basically taps you on your shoulder when you're slouching just to remind you to put your shoulders back up. I definitely see smartwatches, especially smartwatch applications, hitting the market hard. And so we'll see a lot of applications like those that allow you to pay for things, to hailing cabs, to tracking your health, to allow for you to filter through the noise of your email more easily on your wrist. Wearables go beyond being just a gimmick. It can even assist people with tracking vitals and can impact the quality of life. What we're seeing, for example, is that little wearable camera that takes pictures every 30 seconds. For someone like me, that's a nice to have. But if you put it in the context of someone with Alzheimer's, where they're not able to keep track of where they've been or where they put things on a regular basis. And so wearables in the context of people who really need them are really going to make sense. When it comes to the cutting edge of wearable technology, developers are also focused on the spiritual mind. Everybody knows that meditation is good for them, but most people also know that it's very hard to do. Ariel Garten has invented a wearable headband called Muse. Muse slips on just like a pair of glasses, and there are sensors on the forehead and behind the ears. Then tracks your brainwave activity in real time and sends it to your smartphone or tablet. You can then actually hear the sound of your own mind. Our brain communicates electrochemically. The neurons inside our head send electrical signals from one to the other. The sum total of that electrical energy can actually be read on the surface of your head. So Muse tells you when you're in a state of focused attention, when you're meditating, if you're doing it right, so you can come overcome all of the hurdles of learning to actually get in touch with yourself, settle into your own mind, and experience all the benefits of meditation. A headband that monitors your brain waves can also be used in other ways. Child has ADHD, often they have elevated levels of theta waves, dream state, and lowered levels of theta waves, focus state. And with Muse, what you can do is teach a child how to elevate their beta waves by just playing a video game and teach them what it actually feels like to focus and in doing so improve their ADD symptoms. Even today as a mindfulness tool, Muse teaches you how your mind wanders into negative places and how to take your brain out of those negative places and put it on something that's supportive to you. A tool that can take our minds out of negative places sounds too good to be true. I'm always very conscious of people saying like, oh no, technology is going to take over our life. Technology should not take over our lives. When technology maps to us more effectively, when technology becomes smaller, when it becomes subtler, when it knows our actions and our habits more intimately, then it can be a better assistant and a better tool and a better helper to us. With more and more wearable gadgets coming online, there is a treasure trove of personal information being collected. We may see a breach in data that is related to wearable tech uh, because we, we've seen it before time and time again with computer or smartphone type data. So I don't think we should delude ourselves in thinking that's not going to happen. I think we should um, preemptively prepare for that time. The wearable tech startups are really being careful about how that data is being collected, where is it stored, how secure it is. It's, it's easy to understand that people are scared of wearable technology because anything new you approach with 
with fear and hesitance. Once it becomes more normal, when you see more people utilize it, like your friends or professionals, for example, that can really help you move past that you know, hesitancy. Um, and then once you have that aha moment and you basically are wearing tech and it's adding value to your life, whether that's allowing you to lose weight faster or look at an email and filter through the noise of these digital distractions a lot easier than the embracing of technology that is new, wearable technology can happen.